Hello guys, a little bit of a shorter video for you today. Well, I hope I don't get too rambly anyway, so let's just get into it. So today we're talking about this. Ooh, this. Ooh, I can't point this. <laughs> there we go. And how this represents progressive Christianity. All right, and it is a subtle, subtle way that pro progressive or pro however you want to say it gets into the church okay because no one in the church is perfect um men and women mess up all the time we <laughs> we just we mess up we constantly mess up we think we're right when we mess up and then we have to be guided by our fellows over the other way okay but just listen i'm going to read this just listen to it Y'all want a submissive woman, but forget you have to be a righteous man. Being submissive does not mean to shut up and sit down when you say so. It means to trust you to lead, protect, and provide. No woman is going to submit to a man who lies, that's controlling, or can't meet her emotional and spiritual needs. Okay. I reject this pretty much wholeheartedly. Okay. And here's why. As a traditional woman, a trad wife, that's what I like to call myself now, Y'all want a submissive woman, but forget you have to be a righteous man. No. Okay, no. If you have married this man already, and he was not righteous before you married him, he was not going to church, he was not working, he was not doing these things, that's on you. Okay, that's on you as the woman. You should not have married him. If he was that way before, and he has backslid, okay, now it's time to get to work. Now, both of you should get to work. If he won't do it... Then it's time for you as a woman to get to work praying, making sure he stays in church, getting people in church to be with him. Okay. Now it's work time. It's not you, you had your fun and now something went wrong. So now it's work time. It's not time to be like, well, you're doing wrong. So I can do wrong. No, 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 no. Now it's work time. Let's go on to the second part. Being submissive does not mean to shut up and sit down when you say so. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> yes, it does. Should someone tell you to shut up and sit down? Uh, unless you're, you know, mostly no. But if you're being crazy, yes. Okay. Let's just recognize here that women are crazy. We have our different varieties of crazy. We have our different levels of crazy, but we are crazy as part of our fun. Okay. <clears throat> as long as we're not being dangerous. But yes. Okay, it does mean to do that. If you're in an argument and your husband's like, just shut up, shut up. Okay, just, just shut up. At this point, this man is not going to listen to anything you say. Whatever your goal is, is not going to happen because he's not willing to listen to it. You can bring it up again later when you're both more calm, but shut up. I do not understand why this, I mean, you, I don't like to be told to shut up and sit down. But I will do it because basically at that point, that person is not listening to you anymore. You have said something that has offended them so much that they don't want to hear you even speak. Okay. So that's just wrong. I can't even go there. It means to trust you to lead, protect, and provide. Yes, I do trust my husband to do that. If I didn't trust him to do that from the start, from the get go, from the minute I was like, I think I could marry this guy. Then I would not have married him. A lot of you people out here are getting married, not having conversations about what marriage is to you, not having conversations about expectations, not having conversations about how that's going to go, not having any conversation at all about what a biblical marriage is, what you think a biblical marriage is, what I think a biblical marriage is, what role each person plays you're having no conversations. You're like, I'm in love. I think God said, yes, let's go. I loved my husband before I married him. I thought God was saying yes. And I still had those conversations. We lasted 12 years. Has it always been easy? No, we're two people. I'm crazy and he's lazy. <laughs> it doesn't always make for the best day because then some days I'm lazy and he's crazy. Okay, this is just reality. This is how things are. Whether you're a Christian or not, men and women have a dynamic. The Bible tells you what that dynamic is and how to deal with it and how to live a nice, peaceful marriage, etc., etc., etc. 
If you are not living that way, then you're not going to have a good marriage, period. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. No woman is going to submit to a man who lies, acts controlling, or can't meet her emotional and spiritual needs. If you are a Christian woman, you are supposed to submit anyway. Okay, now if he's asking you to do something illegal or immoral, you don't have to do it. But otherwise, you're supposed to. If you're not doing it, you're wrong. Okay, and this is what I mean by it's progressive because they're trying to say, well, if you aren't doing the right thing, then I don't have to either. <laughs> childish. That's what this is. It's, it's, it's so childish. It, it hurts me. It hurts me to see an, an older woman post this, an older Christian woman. This is ridiculous. I expect this out of a younger woman who maybe doesn't understand or wasn't trained or whatever. An older woman who has been reading their Bible for years and who has been reading all this stuff about women should understand why this does not line up with the Bible. Okay, and again, I am not advocating abuse here. Okay, I'm not saying, you know, if he's using you to do illegal and moral things or if he's beating you. If he's beating you, there's other things that you can do that lines up with the Bible and will fix that problem. However, this is not it. Having this attitude. This is a worldly progressive attitude of I'm super girl. You need to do for me. Okay, no, this is disgusting. All right, now let's go into something else can't meet her emotional and spiritual needs. One, that's not really his job. Well, I would say it's not his job. Okay. If you have emotional needs, most of those needs as a woman can be fulfilled all kinds of different ways. There are things that a Christian man in a Christian design here is supposed to do for his wife spiritually, okay? But you should not be marrying these people unless they're already doing that. When I, before I married my husband, he was already telling me no, telling me what we're gonna do, telling, you know, he had plans, he had all this stuff. I would not marry a man who's like, oh no, everything's up to you. I don't know, I have no plan. I don't know. Yes, you can do everything you want, anything you want at any time. No, that's gross. <laughs> what I want to do, I can have three plans and all of them be something you can do, but not be the best. I don't want a man who's going to say, yeah, just do any of them. All of them, I don't care. I want a man who thinks about what I've said and says what he thinks would be right. Not just, yes, I agree. Yes, yes, yes. No, I don't want a yes man. I want a no man. <laughs> a man who tells me no. A man who tells me you're being crazy. We're not doing that. Because that's a man. A man decides things. A woman can think of all kinds of stuff. She can have plans after plans after plans, but a man decides the thing, okay? Maybe even she's the planner and he's the decider as far as whatever it is they're about to do. But his answer should not always be yes. It should be no. Emotionally, a woman doesn't want to hear that. She, wants, she doesn't want to hear no. She wants to hear yes, okay? <clears throat> My emotional need, whenever I have a plan that I want to do, is to tell me yes. But if it's bad, or if it's wrong, or if it's stupid, he better tell me no. Because that's what's right. It's not about emotions. Emotional needs. You know, part of me thinks it's just about, well, you need to make me feel good. You need to make me feel pretty. You need to make me feel blah, blah, blah. Get over yourself. That's all, that's all I can say is get over yourself. What is it? about women nowadays. It seems like it's nowadays because I don't remember reading this in any historical thing where women need men to tell them that they're pretty. Or women need other women to tell them that they're pretty. Or women need whatever, like they need all, like women need all this outside confirmation of something that they think. Anybody, but especially women, as emotional as we are and as swaying back and forth as we can be <clears throat> to each of, of us on our various degrees, right? <clears throat> Needs to be able to set what's true based on some facts, right? Not on what other people think 
about a thing. All right. So what my, the emotional needs that I have from my husband are very small. There's like maybe one or two. If he doesn't meet them, I go to God. Boom. I've got him automatically. Okay. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It is a ridiculous idea that it is, it is his job to meet needs you have spiritual needs. There's really only one. He needs to be the leader of the household. If he's not go to God, God will lead you. God will change him to lead you. Okay. It is not solely this man's job to do everything that you need. And it, it makes me sort of angry as well, because it seems like, okay, so you don't understand your role and how important it is and how whenever you do sit down and shut up, it shows self-control, you know, because you didn't have it before. And that's why this person doesn't want to talk to you now <clears throat> that whenever you stick with this thing, even when he's not perfect, it means he'll do the same thing for you when you go crazy and you don't provide what you're supposed to, and you don't do all this stuff. This, this, this is gross. And I hope people don't really think this way. I hope this is just sort of like a lashing out of emotion that she had in the moment. Because if you really think a man is just there to serve you, you shouldn't be married. Okay. That's not what he's there to do. In marriage, God comes first and then you. So you're second right out the gate. If you're not serving with your husband or you're not making a home where it's possible for him to do what he's supposed to be doing, or you're not doing, you know, what are all the things that you're not supposed to do or that you're supposed to do, then, you know, according to this, he doesn't have to do what he's supposed to do. And so now you can't even get mad. Let's say you are doing all this. Most of this will fall in line, whatever it is you think it is. Like, I don't even understand spiritual needs other than being a leader in the household. A man will gravitate towards that just naturally because that's how men are made if you don't take it from him. This is a problem I had early on when I was a young married person and didn't completely understand what the Bible was saying about headship and everything. I have more experience making decisions than my husband did, so I can make a decision like that. He did not have as much experience making decisions about things. So it took him longer to get there. He got to the same place, but it just took him longer. Okay. If I continuously, and in this time in our marriage, I was just like, fine, I'll just make the decision. I'll just do it. I'll just do it because I didn't want to wait on him. I didn't want him to learn. Okay. Because it was just taking too long. I just wanted it done now. Selfish, 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 me, me, me. Right. So then I finally realized he's not going to learn and he's not going to be able to do the things he needs to do if I don't stop taking it from him. All right. This, that's why this right here drives me nuts because here's the thing. Let's say your husband is deficient in whatever way you think he's deficient. Okay. <clears throat> he's not going to get better if you do it. He's not going to get better if you nag him. He's not going to get better if you sit here and say stuff like this. I'm not going to do right until you do. Well, some of this stuff takes time to learn. Some of this stuff takes time to practice. Like today, right now, he can make a decision quite quickly. He knows exactly what he wants to do, you know, for how long and all this stuff, right? But if I did not step down, be submissive and wait, excuse me, then he would not be where he is today. Submission. Okay waiting on your husband, waiting on your man, being there to support him, having the house organized in the way it should be, etc., helps a man do all the things he needs to do, helps him be the leader, helps him do all this. Okay. Helps him understand that it's important to do it. If he sees you in the house doing what you're supposed to do, he sees you being submissive like you're supposed to. If he sees you doing the right thing, it encourages him to go and do the right thing. It's very simple. It's very simple. This over here complicates it. It makes it childish. It makes it disgusting. Okay. That's the only word I can think of. When I read this, I think, oh, that's gross. 
because I know where it's coming from, from a childish mindset, from a selfish mindset. Okay. And again, as I've already said, I am not perfect. I did not always do what I was supposed to do. I did not always act the way a good wife should act. Let's just say it the way it is. But now I can recognize this and be like, oh, that's gross. That's just childish. That's just, you're hurt, so you want to lash out and hurt somebody else. Well, you need to grow up too, sounds like. If you can post this with any kind of seriousness at all, you need to grow up too. And that's all I can say about this one. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little more rambling than I was, I was going to, but this is progressiveness. This is everybody's even. Everybody's the same. Everybody's supposed to do. You know, everybody is supposed to just be for me. And the Christian life's not about me. It's about serving others, putting others before you, putting God before all of that. You know, that's what's just, it's just gross. Anyway. Remember to pray and read your Bible, guys, and I will see you in the next one.